Hello, my name is Gustavo. Hello, my name is Isabel Lopes. We are second year students on the radiology technology course at UTFPR and in Professor Katia Cruz's Human Anatomy 2 class. In this presentation, we will talk about H. pylori. We will begin our first part of the presentation on H. pylori. Let's start with the summary. We're going to tell you a little bit about the definition of the digestive system, which is where the bacterium is salogenic, how H. pylori came about. What is H. pylori? Statistics. The transmission medium. Definition of the digestive system. The digestive system is very important. It is responsible for processing food and absorbing nutrients. This process of digestion begins in the mouth and ends with the release of feces. The digestive system is made up of the mouth, esophagus, stomach, liver, pancreas, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, and anus. These organs together produce various enzymes to ensure the correct processing of these foods. Digestion begins in the mouth with the action of saliva and teeth. The food bolus travels up the pharynx, down the esophagus, and into the stomach, where it undergoes the action of gastric juice and becomes chyme. The chyme reaches the small intestine and suffers the action of secretions produced by the small intestine itself. Pancreas and liver. The small intestine absorbs a lot of nutrients. In the large intestine, feces are formed and eliminated from the body through the anus. How did the H. pylori bacteria originate? The H. pylori bacterium is a gram-negative bacterium that was first identified by Barry Marshall and Robin Wheatley in 1983 in Australia. This discovery earned the scientists the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 2005. Marshall then had a fit of madness. He decided to drink a culture medium with Helicobacter pylori to prove that the inflammation was caused by a bacterium and managed to fix an inflammation that was causing him pain and vomiting. He soon underwent an endoscopy and was proved right. At the time, stress and lifestyle were considered the main cause of peptic ulcers. From then on, the importance of this type of pathology began to be noticed. Helicobacter pylori, better known as H. pylori, is a bacterium that mainly affects the stomach, can reach the duodenum and can cause various gastrointestinal symptoms and complications. The H. pylori bacterium has an incredible ability to survive an extremely acidic environment with a pH below 4.0. Our stomach acidity is our body's defense mechanism. The H. pylori bacterium has some evolutionary tricks that have allowed it to adapt to such a hostile environment. It produces substances that neutralize acids, forming a kind of protective cloud. around it, allowing it to move around inside the stomach until it finds a spot to settle in. In addition to this protection, H. pylori is able to overcome the mucus barrier in the stomach, has to protect itself from its own acidity. It sticks to the mucosa, the area below the mucus, where the acidity is much less intense. Therefore, in addition to producing substances against acidity, H. pylori is able to penetrate the even in places where the environment is less aggressive. They lodge in the stomach mucosa, specifically in the microvilli, and release enzymes which deregulate some essential factors for the protection of the epithelium. In addition, they produce a vacuolizing cytokine that causes the destruction of stomach cells. 
When the bacteria lodge in the gastric tissue, it is common for some kind of response to occur. Inflammation in the area. It can cause ulcers or gastritis, which can develop into bleeding. According to the World Health Organization, more than 50% of the world's population is or has been contaminated by H. pylori. In Brazil alone, there are around 20,000 new cases every year. This disease is associated with various factors, and it is believed that in at least 10% of cases, that H. pylori is the main influencer. This varies with age, socioeconomic status, and race. Serological evidence is rarely found before the age of 10, but this is increasing to 10% for those aged between 18 and 30 and 50% for those over 60. In any age group, the infection seems to be common in blacks and Hispanics in comparison with the white population. According to WHO data, eradicating the bacteria could prevent around 80% of deaths, cases of gastric cancer. For this reason, H. pylori is classified as a class 1 carcinogen, the same as cigarettes. According to the International Agency for Research on Cancer, means of transmission, low socioeconomic status accompanied by inadequate housing and hygiene conditions, facilitate the onset of the problem. This bacterium is transmitted through contact with feces, saliva, food, and contaminated water. It can be transmitted from person to person, especially when hands are not washed, properly after bowel movements or when sharing personal items such as cutlery and glasses, Hi guys, my name is Gustavo. This is the continuation of the previous video that was presented by Isabel on the H. pylori bacteria. Let's start with the summary. I'll talk about symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment. And its side effects, the risks of the disease and how to avoid it, and we finish with the measures. Prevention and references. Symptoms. H. pylori infection does not always cause symptoms in affected patients. It can be asymptomatic for many years, but become asymptomatic over time. And the consequent degradation of the intestinal and stomach mucous membranes. But when this happens, the symptoms are a bloated belly, loss of appetite, pain and burning sensation in the stomach, nausea or vomiting, belching or intestinal gas. Excessive, very dark or bloody stools. Diagnosis. H. pylori can be diagnosed by means of a blood test, which is known. Such as serology. Its aim is to identify whether there are antibodies against bacteria circulating in the body of the patient. This is the most common and simplest test to perform. Stool test. This is also a simple test, but one that is very effective. It can be used to detect the presence of H. pylori antigens in the stool sample of the patient. Breath tests with labeled urea. The procedure involves ingesting a substance labeled with urea. If the bacteria is present in the stomach, it can be detected. This is because the substance breaks down urea and releases marked carbon dioxide, which helps a lot in the diagnostic evaluation. And finally, the endoscopic biopsy test. A biopsy is the removal of a small sample of tissue from the lining of the stomach. The procedure is carried out during endoscopy. Once this material has been removed, it is examined under a microscope to detect whether or not it is present. Of H. pylori. Treatment. As it is a bacterium, treatment consists of the administration of associated antibiotics. To a class of drugs called proton pump inhibitors, which reduce acidity of the stomach. Drugs such as omeprazole should be used for about a week to 14 days. After treatment, you should wait a few weeks and do another test to evaluate. If the bacteria has been eradicated, if the person still has H. pylori, a new treatment should be indicated. 
In most cases, only antibiotics are needed to eliminate the infection. Side effects. As with any other treatment, drug therapy for H. pylori can have effects. Side effects, including bitter taste in the mouth, headache, nausea or vomiting, diarrhea. And finally, abdominal discomfort. For this reason, health professionals tend to prescribe proton pump inhibitors. Reduce adverse reactions. Risks of the disease. One of the most common risks of Kapilor is developing anemia. Due to the destruction of the stomach and intestinal walls, many patients experience bleeding, which lead to blood loss and consequently a decrease in the body's iron stores, or even difficulty absorbing nutrients such as those essential for iron metabolism in the body. Other consequences include the occurrence of ulcers, the development of gastritis, various inflammations and stomach cancer. How to avoid it? One of the ways to avoid becoming infected with the Agapalor bacteria is to start a diet. It is characterized by being low in fat in order to avoid poor digestion, such as unpeeled or cooked fruit and vegetables, especially when there are native symptoms. It's also important to divide up your meals, eating between five and six a day. Drinking fluids outside of the main meals, eating slowly and chewing food well. As well as moderating or avoiding the consumption of coffee and alcoholic beverages. Finally, I've listed some preventive measures against Agapalor, such as Sanitize your hands before eating and preparing meals. Wash your hands thoroughly after using the toilet. Sanitize fruits and vegetables. Prefer to eat cooked vegetables. Avoid sharing personal belongings, glasses, and cutlery. Only consume drinking water of good precedence. And these are our references that we used to put together the presentation.